All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and create a basic, basic search form. And the way we're gonna do this is by really searching by ID and only ID at this point. So to get started, we're gonna go ahead and create the search form HTML element first. So this is non-Django specific. So opening up base.html, this is where we'll put it. Eventually we will change this out and have it in a nav bar of some kind. But for now, we'll go ahead and just put in a form element in here. And we're gonna put in two inputs. So each one of these inputs is going to be fairly basic. The first one is going to be a text input. So we'll do type equals to text. So this means it's gonna render out something that we can type into, and it's gonna be all text. Now there is one that you can use number for, but I actually wanna use text to have some safeguards built in to it, as we'll see. Next, the input we'll use is submit. So this means to just submit the form to say, hey, yeah, this form is good to go, okay? And so we'll just leave it like that for now and we'll just make sure our server is running. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Our server is running. So let's go ahead and refresh on our page and there's our actual form. So this is actually a fundamental aspect of building web applications as well is having input from our users beyond just clicking. And so in this case, I wanna actually submit something. So I'm gonna go ahead and say my query, hit enter and nothing happens. I mean, granted this refreshed, the actual page refreshed, but nothing happened to the URL other than this question mark here. So we can try that again without the question mark. And I'll just do ABC, hit enter. Notice that it has a question mark with nothing there. Now, of course it's trying to do a search, but the thing is our actual form is not well designed. So the input itself, other than the actual submit button, every other input needs a name at least. So in our case, we're gonna go ahead and just give the name of query. You could also call it, you know, search item, but I'm gonna go ahead and say query. Query is really the common way to name a search as you're querying the back end, essentially. So we're gonna go ahead and query this and I'll refresh in here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do a search again. So query, and now if I, query for query, we get that. If I do ABC, we get that. And the cool thing about having it on the base is no matter where I go, it's gonna do that query, okay? So we'll stick to the homepage for a moment. And we wanna actually explore one other concept. And that is, where do I submit this form to? As in, what URL and what view is gonna be handling this form. Now there's a lot of different ways on how to think about this before I even go down that rabbit hole. Let's just add in the attribute of action and we're gonna send this to Google. So www.google.com. And Google really likes to use these inputs as well, but instead of using query as the name, they just simply use Q. This is very, very common of a, like a nickname or a shortcut name for query. So we save that and we refresh in here again, and I'll go ahead and say that we wanna do try Django. We hit submit and it does actually go to google.com and it does fill in a query up here, uh, but it actually didn't submit the search, but it did fill in this box here. Of course, if I hit enter now, it's gonna show all of these different try Django series that I have, that of course I recommend that you watch. But the idea here is we can actually submit a query to our URL. So this is actually pretty cool. So it's very similar to having a dynamic URL, but if you recall these dynamic URLs, I had to define them. This search on the other hand, the user can sort of define them as they see fit. Now, of course, we don't actually want it to go to Google. We want it to be on our site. So I'll leave that action empty for now. And now I'll go ahead and search try Django again. And this time it goes right here. Right, so it's actually showing it, it's on our page, it's on our local server, and there we go. So we actually have a way to submit some data. So now we need a way to actually handle that data. And this is where actually creating a view, like a proper view, and a URL to handle that data. Now I will say that we already do have a view and we already do have a URL that could handle that data, like this home view. But when it comes to search results, we probably want it to have its own view. So what I'm gonna do is inside of my article views, I'm gonna go ahead and create a article search view. So we'll go ahead and define article search view. And again, it's gonna take a request. 
It does not need any URL arguments. And then we're going to return render. So what are the things we need to return inside of render? Well, of course, the request, some template, and then some context. So yet again, I'll go ahead and set context to an empty dictionary. And then in render, we'll go ahead and say request the template. Well, let's just call this search.html and then context equals to context. Now notice that I'm not putting it inside of articles. So really this will end up being a search view. But since we are inside of the article app still, let's just go ahead and put it into articles, that actual template folder as well. Okay, cool. Um, so now we've got a really basic view. So we do need to build it out quite a bit more. Uh, so before I actually build it out, I will add this view to my URL. So going back into my URLs, I'm gonna just go ahead and copy the article path here. And I'm just gonna put it in the root of the article path as in this right here. So um, I'm calling that the root is because it doesn't actually have this associated to it at all. And the thing with URL patterns that I did not mention yet, which is actually critical for this, is the order. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. The order in this case, we want to have our baseline search view right here. So again, I'll go ahead and copy the name to article search view. Of course, if you remembered it, you could just type it out. Uh, but here we go. We're going to go ahead and now have article search view in here. Great. So now we have an actual URL and view to handle the search. So if I go into that, we'll go in and do articles and with no number at the end. And of course, now we get a template does not exist, but the view is showing up. So template does not exist, hopefully is an expected error because, well, we haven't made that search template yet. So let's go ahead and make that. And so inside of articles, I'm gonna go ahead and new file and search.html. In this case, I'll just copy everything from detail.html just to speed things up a bit. Now, the object itself is not gonna show up. So for now, I'll just go ahead and say if object and then end if. The reason it's not going to show up is because, well, we haven't actually added it into our context just yet. Hopefully soon we will, uh, but just not yet. Okay, so now that we've got that article template page or the search article template page, we can refresh in here. And what do you know? There we go. So now we can just do a quick search. I do the number three and nothing happens, right? Well, something happened. It actually changed the URL to a dynamic URL. So again, if I went into article three, this is actually what I want to render. But if I do that search, it just adds, appends the query of three to any URL I'm at, which of course you might guess is an issue, but we will fix that in a moment. So let's just go back to just simply articles and solve this view first. So inside of our views, how do we actually get that query data? How do we get the data that's coming in on the URL if it's not being passed as a function, if it's not being passed as one of these dynamic URLs. Well, the way we do that has to do with the request itself. So if I actually print out the request, what we'll see is a specific kind of class. So let's go ahead and take a look. I refresh in here. And what do you know? There's a WSGI request class. So this class itself will have attributes to it that maybe you don't know about yet. So whenever I don't know about an attribute of a class, I just use DIR to see all of the various properties or attributes of that class. So if I refresh in here again, now I get all of this data in here. So this is showing me some cool stuff. One of the things that could actually stand out to you is the fact that user is in there. That I think is pretty cool. The part that we're concerned about right now is this get right here. So we'll come back to other pieces to, of this later. Now, the reason we're concerned about the get has to do with how URLs work is we are trying to get that information as you'll see every time you run a request. So let me just go ahead and comment this out for a moment. And we're, I'm just gonna refresh several times in this page here. So if I refresh several times and go back into the terminal, scroll down a bit, what I see is a bunch of get requests. Now this is not by accident, this is on purpose. So this get request is going to directly correlate to the data we want that's similar to this. So if I actually printed out the get request, that property, so request.get, just print that out. And of course you could try this with every other property of the request itself. Uh, but if we print this one out and refresh in here, what we should see is, well, this right here. 
So query dict, query dictionary is what that is, right? So right now it's an empty dictionary. Let's go ahead and do a quick search. I'm just going to search for three. And what do you know? It actually is showing me three associated to the key uh, of Q. And so if we actually go back into search and change, or rather go back into base.html and change the input here to ABC, save that. And then we'll go ahead and refresh on this page. And again, I'll search three. Now ABC is up in the URL. And what we see in our query dictionary is also ABC. So what's happening here is this form is really just attaching the name of ABC or whatever this input name is and the value when we hit submit. And the actual default method of how this is working is get. It's that capital G-E-T method that we've been seeing. So it's very similar to like navigating to that page on your own. It's not really sending data. Instead, it's requesting this kind of URL, which is why you can actually share stuff like this. So you can share searches. Typically speaking, you can share searches, especially like Google searches, because it actually contains the query inside of the URL. It's almost like, almost, almost like doing something like this, but instead it's actually user generated. It's a query that's user generated. And of course, if I did something like 30,000, you know, this may or may not work on my machine, but you know, that isn't exactly up to the design that I laid out. What, in other words, if I actually removed this dynamic URL querying, the only way I would be able to actually find articles is by doing that kind of search. Um, and that's actually pretty cool, I think. So what we want to do then is extract the data that's coming in this query. And to do that, it's simple. First off, I'll go ahead and say query dict equals to request dot get. Okay. And so this of course is a dictionary. So we can actually wrap this in a dictionary just to remind us. Uh, I don't need to wrap it into a dictionary, but I will say this, you know, I'll just make a note for myself. This is a dictionary. And so that means that my actual query equals to query dict.get of whatever the query is or the query name is. In this case, it was Q, right? So that's what we did on base.html. We called it Q. But if you wanted to change the actual form, the actual HTML form to a different query, then you could go about doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this in as a note as well. Okay. So now this is our actual query. So we can use this query to find an article object. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and copy this right here. And we're going to paste it right underneath the query. This time we're going to go ahead and use the query instead of a past ID argument. And what I also want to do is say, if query is not none, then I'll go ahead and run that. And if it is, I'll just set a default of that article object being none. And again, I'll pass in my context here of object being the article object. And the reason, of course, I'm using object being article object is because of my search here. It's showing that, right? So we actually have that same concept going through. Okay, cool. Um, so now that we've got this, let's go ahead and give it a shot. So in here, I still have the query of three going, but I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Just navigate to articles here, hit three, hit enter. And what do you know? It's actually showing up that item. Now, what if I actually searched a item that does not exist, right? So some number that does not exist, I get this article matching query does not exist. Now, this is of course that exact same error that we saw before when we tried to navigate to something like that. That is something, this is an exception that is intended. Like we know, or I knew that this was gonna happen and it's something we'll address later. But let's actually go to another one that we can fix right now. And so let's go ahead and hit like ABC here and hit search. Now it's saying field ID expected a number, but got ABC. Now, the reason we see this has to do with our actual query and also how you can even look up specific fields in any given model. So if we go back in here, we see this right here. So this is actually looking up, this is doing a get request using whatever this query may be. And so what that means is I need to actually update this query. So I'm gonna go ahead and do try query equals to the integer, well, of this data here. 
So what I'm trying to do here is convert whatever's coming through in here as an integer. And then I'll comment this one out actually. And then we'll go ahead and just catch all exceptions here and just say query is none. Okay, so there we go. So now if the query is an integer, it's gonna come through in here and actually work. And if it's not an integer, then it's not gonna actually run a query. So if I refresh in here now, we've got nothing. But if I do a number, still working. And so there is another way I could actually uh, approach this as well. Uh, but honestly, we need better searching anyway. So this is really basic, basic, basic searching. We wanna make this better in the future. So I'm gonna leave it as is. Now, one of your intuitions might be, hey, wait a minute, this git request, what if I actually did pass in a string here and instead of you know allowing that to happen, I can just put it into a try block. And that would actually be a way to solve that, but it's not a super clean way to solve it. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave it as is. In other words, this type of item when it's missing, that is an exception. It's a does not exist exception. So we totally, totally could put it into a try block like we did right here. But we wanna do that in a really clean way. So I'm not actually gonna address that just yet. But now what we've got is an actual search. So if I search out one that does exist, it will render. But we also have one more problem and it has to do with that action thing that I was talking about earlier. I hit enter here and if I search on the home page now of three, it doesn't actually search. It just stays on the home page. And so that's where we come back into base. That's where this action actually makes a difference is we can now tell it which URL you wanna perform this action on. And in our case, it's simply slash articles, similar to like what we were doing with Google, but now we've got this. If I do a three now, now it actually performs that search, which is pretty awesome, I think. So that's a fundamentally basic search, and it's also showing us a bit about the request data. So there is a whole nother kind of data that can come through, and that's something we wanna talk about in the next one.